Hi, everyone. My name is Eric Crittenden. I'm the Chief Investment Officer at Standpoint Asset Management. I made this video because I want to share with you the results of an experiment that I've been doing for the past couple of years. I call it the blind taste test. And essentially what I do in this experiment is anonymize different asset classes and then present them to people. And I ask people to identify which asset classes they gravitate towards and which ones they shy away from. Now, after they've made their decision, I reveal to them what they chose and the results are very surprising. Let me show you. So here I've anonymized five different potential investments. And what I'd like for you to do is take 15 or 20 seconds, review the numbers, and you make a mental note of which asset classes you like and gravitate towards and which ones you would shy away from. I'll come back in about 15 seconds. Are you ready to see the results? Okay. So in my experience, almost everyone chooses orange for first place. That's the one people like. Their second favorite is green, followed by yellow, then blue, and they do not like red at all. Comes in last place. Is this similar to your choices? Let's take a look at the actual names of these asset classes. Uh, before we unpack this, let me just talk about this vertical line. So to the left of the vertical line are true asset classes. To the right are portfolios comprised of those asset classes. And they're real simple. They're just equal weight 50-50 portfolios. So for stocks and bonds, it's just 50% U.S. stocks, 50% U.S. bonds rebalance once a year at the end of the year. Same thing for managed futures. 50% U.S. stocks, 50% managed futures rebalance once a year. Did you unwittingly choose stocks and managed futures? If you did, it just means you're normal. Most people do that. Key takeaways. So when I force people to be objective, they almost always choose stocks and managed futures. And then they're really confused about it. And it's easy to see why. When you look at bonds and you compare them to managed futures, bonds have had a higher annualized return, one third the volatility, and one fourth the downside risk. So people naturally expect bonds to have been the better diversifier. But when we combine them into a portfolio, we see a different result. The managed futures portfolio has a higher return than the stock bond portfolio. The volatility is essentially the same, and the downside risk is about half. It's a very counterintuitive result. Now, rest assured, I am not suggesting that you run out and put 50% into managed futures. But I am pointing this out for a reason. I think you're gonna start to see more all weather style programs. And I characterize stocks and managed futures blended together into one product as an all weather product. And I think you're gonna see more of these to compete with balanced products. And if one of these ends up on your desk, I'm hoping that the concepts that we covered in this video today help you to avoid the pitfall of making direct comparisons or being too overly influenced by the challenging performance that Managed Futures has had recently. And instead, to take the time to evaluate the actual impact on a portfolio, both in terms of enhancing returns and mitigating risk. Again, my name is Eric Crittenden. I'm the CIO at Standpoint, and I thank you very much for watching and listening. Take care.